Hey guys, what is up? It is Chris, the Drone Geek of Lancaster, here today with a new series for you on YouTube. I've been thinking long and hard about this one, and I think it's time that we introduce it because it's gonna bring a new element to the channel that I'm really excited about. It's our behind the scenes series. So what that means is pretty much exactly how it sounds. I am going to take you behind the scenes of the various shoots and flights that I do with the drone, just to give you an inside look as to what goes into creating things such as Sky High History and Explore the World and Let's Talk Drones. So for more or less, it's going to be just how am I doing these things? How do I get this accomplished? What are my flying habits? What things do I go through to prepare for these programs, to prepare for these flights? And, you know, honestly, some bloopers as well. So I hope you enjoy it. It's really exciting for me, and I can't wait to add one more piece of content to my channel. I think you're gonna like it. Yes, so welcome to the first episode of Behind the Scenes with Drone Geek Lancaster. Today, we are headed to the Ephrata Cloister in Ephrata, Pennsylvania. We're gonna be filming that with the Mavic 2 Zoom. The Pro is still at the DJI Repair Center, which is a different topic for a different video that you may or may not get, depending upon how they handle the resolution on my service. So we'll just see how, how that pans out. But today it's all about the cloister. I'm really excited. So what this is, is basically, it used to be a monastery or a convent where nuns and monks used to live. And I'm really interested to see how it fits into this area and its history. I haven't done a lot of research yet, but obviously since this is going to be an episode of Sky High History, we're gonna dig right into that, learn a little bit more about it so that we can talk about it and not sound like complete idiots. So right now I'm on Route 222, headed to Ephrata from Lancaster. It's about a 10 mile journey, so it's not real long. It'll be there in about five or 10 minutes. And I'm just excited to dig in and I'm always excited to fly the drone. And really I'm excited to get the GoPro out and use it for more of a vlog style video with this behind the scenes series. So I hope you're excited too. So we're having a bit of a dilemma here. Um, trying to be careful about where I go to film here because I don't want to necessarily incite any type of wrath from law enforcement or anybody working there for trespassing. Not that I would ever trespass, but sometimes you miss a sign and you end up somewhere you're really not supposed to be. So I'm going back to the entrance. It says that they're closed because of COVID, which makes sense, but I just want to be sure that me pulling into the parking lot isn't going to be a problem because if it is, obviously, we're either gonna be sent away, best case scenario, or uh, we'll have some other problems on our hands. All right, guys, so we just got here to the cloister, and uh, it's actually really nice. It's a nice little spot even for me to sit at a bench. I don't know, again, what the um, stipulations are here for this, but uh, it does seem like it's pretty open. It doesn't seem like anybody's here, so I don't think... Sorry, I wasn't even on the camera. I don't think that we're going to have any issues with anybody not wanting me here. So... Yeah, let's uh, go ahead and get right into this. Okay, so when I get here to film, I've got my nice Monfrotto or Manfrotto backpack here, and I keep my drone in the side compartment, whether it's the Pro or the Zoom, fits in there really nicely. I got this from B&H, this setup. Um, they were doing a buy a Mavic 2 Pro and get a Manfrotto backpack for it for free. So can't pass that up, and I looked up at the value on this thing, and it's roughly $120 or so from what I could tell. So pretty good deal. But we're gonna get the drone set up. I always like to hold the blades of the wings out and I always take the cover off before I do anything, just so that when I start it up, I know there's not gonna be any issues. Check to make sure this battery is about three quarters of the way full. So we'll use the rest of this up before we switch to our next battery. And then since we have such a nice spot to sit, we'll go ahead and do that. Actually, I'm gonna move you a little closer. So I should be good there. So we'll plug the controller in. 
to the phone. And I think that we're just about set. Okay, so this is a really nice setup. I really couldn't ask for a better setup, to be honest with you. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna take off. Do some geese over here. Um, yeah, no, there's definitely geese over there. You may or may not be able to see them. I don't know, but they may pose an interesting problem. I have to calibrate the compass. Least favorite part, I hate it. Something I always forget I have to do, and then I have to do it, and I look like a dope when I do it. So let's go ahead and start calibrating the compass. Tilting it like this. All right, calibration complete as a success. Excellent. Because I feel like an idiot and I'm a little dizzy. So, all right. Put it straight there. We're good to go. No sign of company. So, it looks like we're going to have a good time. Let's take off. Just got done with our flight at the effort of cloister and we are gonna break down and head home the next segment in behind the scenes is going to take you back to my apartment we're gonna go through the footage we're gonna find out what works what doesn't and we're gonna pick and choose what we want to include in sky high history as well as do the voiceover so we're gonna head back to Lancaster now and get that process started But before we go back to Lancaster, I do want to share with you my favorite part of any drone trip, and that would be Dairy Queen. Yeah, we're gonna get some ice cream. But before we go, safety first. Looking in a large row in New York. That's me, thank you. Yeah, have a good day. You too. Oh yeah. I made a promise to you yesterday that I didn't follow through on. I said that we were gonna go back to my apartment and edit the Effort of Cloister video for Sky High History during this behind the scenes episode and it didn't happen. So I got a little sidetracked. I went to Dairy Queen, as you saw, and then I went to Katie's apartment and had dinner. It's a little backwards, but what of it. And then I came back here and I almost completely passed out as soon as I got home because I was that tired. Now, not all's lost. I did come home and I imported the footage from the drone and from the GoPro yesterday, and I was able to get it onto my computer and I had to stop myself, give myself a little slap on the wrist when I started editing the video ahead of time. So you'll see here in a moment that I already have some of the things set up on the timeline, but we haven't gotten too far in. And besides, there's really only one thing I wanted to get into kind of detail with you, and that's color grading. So color grading is really important for videos and it's something that I'm just starting to get the hang of and I'm learning more and more about every time I do it. But color grading can be used to convey a tone or to convey some sort of emotion or it can simply be used just to make the image on your video look that much better. Pop those colors out and just get the lighting balance right so that you have really good cinematic quality footage. So with Sky High History, we're not trying to convey any kind of emotion. We're not trying to set a tone. We're trying to deliver information to people about a historically relevant area or monument or person. With Sky High History, we're not trying to influence the viewer's mindset. We're going to let them process the information that we're giving to them without setting any kind of tone, any kind of emotionally charged content, we're presenting it in a way that they're able to chew on it and they're able to perceive for themselves how they feel about it. So when we color grade this footage, we really just want to do it to make it more pleasing to the eye. We want them to look at the footage that we're taking with the drone and we want the colors to pop and we want it to be rich and have a really crystal clear image. So that's what we're going to do. So for the time being, I'm going to push myself up into the corner of the video and we're going to turn our attention to Adobe Premiere. So something about Adobe Premiere. 
I love it. I think it is probably the best prosumer video editing software there is. And in fact, I would struggle to even call it prosumer. It is a professional video editing software. People use it for all level projects. Now, it might not have all of the bells and whistles of a Hollywood studio, but for YouTube and for projects for your clients or clients of people that you know, it's gonna get the job done and it's gonna do exactly what you need it to do. It is fully loaded for the most part. So I really like it. If you have an extra $21 a month that's burning a hole in your pocket and you wanna start editing videos, I highly recommend Adobe Premiere. It's totally worth the cost and it's really elevated my game as a video producer all the way around. So, turning our attention here, you'll see that I did set up, as I said, a little bit of the timeline already. We have our intro, which is still relatively new to the Sky High History series. That was first introduced in our Three Mile Island video, which you can view by clicking the link at the top of this video. We have our first two clips, and just to break down what these clips are all about, I have two different clips. It was around 5.30 in the afternoon, so at that point, the sun had reached a corner of the sky in the west that it was giving very deliberate light from a particular angle. So if the drone is facing west in the clips, that means that the sky is really blown out and the light source is just a little too strong for it because I was only using an ND16 filter. I didn't really want to go any darker because then it'd get too dark in the areas where there's a lot of shadows and you'll see that in a moment. In fact, you can see it right here in this little frame, there's a lot of trees casting a lot of shadows over top of the property. So I didn't wanna to get too dark, so I just thought, you know what, I'll darken up the highlights and we'll bring that back a little bit, we'll rein that in. It'll be easier than creating noise and brightening up those dark spots. But then I have other clips that are facing north, south, and east that look like this. And that overall, the color image itself is pretty ready just to be produced. I mean, it's got a very nice color profile. It is shot in decent like so it's a little more flat than I would have liked, uh, but that's what post-production is for. So I usually shoot in decent like I'm always ready for that color profile to be very flat, but that's, again, why I have Adobe Premiere because it helps me to elevate those clips. But you see the contrast. You've got this, which has very natural, very true colors, and you've got this that, well, a little bit of attention to sky up here and to bring those highlights and those brighter tones back. So what we're going to do with these two clips is create color profiles that will then copy and paste to clips that are like these two. So if we have clips that are from the drone facing west, we'll use the color profile from this clip as we'll also use this clip for drone shots that are facing north, south, and east where the sun isn't blowing the sky out. So to start, Let's jump into the easier one first. Let's do clip number two, where we're not gonna need to do nearly as much because again, this is already really great as it stands, but we can just make it a little bit better. So I'm not gonna mess around with LUT packs. That'll be a separate video. I have a ton of LUT packs and we're not gonna get into that because I have them from all over the place, all over the internet. I sort of just went on a binge one time and started downloading them from everywhere. Again, another video, different time. So we're not gonna mess with LUTs, but we are gonna come in here and we're gonna mess with our white balance. We're gonna mess with our tones and and then we're gonna also play with the saturation a little bit, very basic color grading, but it will elevate my footage for this and it'll elevate yours too if you follow along. So we're gonna start at exposure. I always like to start here because this sort of sets the pace for the rest of the sliders on this menu. So exposure, we don't really need to do much to this. In fact, I would say if anything, we would wanna bring it up by like 0.25. Yeah, just a little bit. Not enough to greatly change the actual complexion of the picture, but you did see it brightened it up in some spots. And I think that we're gonna really benefit from that, especially as you approach the front of the clip where we've got a little bit of a darker foreground here in the yard and underneath the tree in that shadow. But we'll go ahead, well, let's actually back it up. So we'll get down to contrast. I always like to keep the contrast in between 25 and 35. I think that's a really good range for most video, especially if you're going for a cinematic look. Sometimes I'll bump it down to 20, sometimes I'll go up to 40. It really just depends upon how I want it to look. So let's go ahead and let's give it a try on the low end. Set it to 25. That's pretty good. Let's check it out at 35 before we move on. So you can see it's a little bit harsher of a contrast on some of the areas of the image. So let's go ahead and meet it in the middle. I actually like it a little darker in the contrast or a little more severe. So we'll meet in the middle there. Lighten it up just a little bit in some areas, but 
overall still looking really good. Highlights, we don't need to play with this very much. In fact, I would be hesitate to really touch it at all, but just for the sake, let's experiment and see what we can do with it. Let's go negative 25. We'll bring the highlights back a little bit in hopes to bring the blue out in the sky up here. You can see it's a very faint, like robin eggs blue right now. And for the most part, that's true to the color of the sky at the time, but I think that it was maybe a little bit more of a deep blue at the time. So let's go ahead and type in negative 25. And you can see that did bring it up a little bit. It went maybe a shade higher and we'll continue to take care of that color, especially when we get down to the saturation slider. So we'll go to shadows. We don't wanna bring up the light in the shadows. What happens is, is if you increase this number, you'll see that this area gets a little lighter and right here, it's not a great example to show you what happens. Well, I guess I can bring it all the way up. Let's go to 100. You'll see in the darker areas, and it's hard to tell with the grass because it has sort of a weird, noisy look to it already. But if you look very, very closely in the video, you can see that there's some noise, some granulation in the shadows there when I bump those up. What it's doing is lightening up those areas. So what we'll do is we will go ahead and light them up just a little bit. I'm going to stick with 25. And actually, let's bump it up to 50. Let's see how that looks. 50 is acceptable. We'll stick with 50 uh, and we'll move on. So whites. We're going to take the whites and bring them back just a hair. Let's do negative five. It really doesn't need to be much. And then for blacks, we'll do the same. I always like to keep those sort of matched and just take the harshness off of those or increase the harshness of them. In this case, black, it made those shadows a little darker. It'll help with any noise that comes through on that clip from when we lightened up the shadows area. So saturation is next. I don't like to get real crazy with saturation. I typically find anywhere between 150 and 175 is a good range for these clips. These were shot on a Mavic 2 Zoom. I also use the Mavic 2 Pro, which has a slightly different color profile right out of the lens, but we'll talk about that in a different video as well. The Mavic 2 Zoom has fairly accurate colors. The image is a little bit cooler, and we'll talk about temperature and tint here in a moment, but for the most part, we don't need to do much with the Mavic 2 Zoom when it's shooting in decent alike. We just have to bring those colors up a little bit. So let's start at 150 and see how that looks. So you can see when I did that, the colors got much richer. The greens got deeper. They're a little bit more vibrant. Uh, the color of the house changed a little bit. It is a little bit more true to form as opposed to what we were looking at before, which we'll go back. You see it just sort of dolls it down a little bit. So we'll go to 150. And just for the heck of it, let's take a look at the top end of my typical range, which is 175. Still not bad. And this is acceptable. I would probably move forward with this as well. I think it's maybe a little too exaggerated. And if you oversaturate your footage, it sometimes doesn't look professional. So I like to keep it in a responsible level of saturation. So we'll go back to 150. I feel like that was a really sweet spot, especially for this clip. And it is. So we're done with the tone, we're done with the saturation and the coloring. Let's move on to the temperature, which is sort of a subcategory of coloring in my opinion. And just a disclaimer here, I am still very new to the world of color grading and post-production. I'm getting better and better and I'm learning more and more. So if I say something that's inaccurate, don't crucify me over it. I am doing my best here to elaborate on how I handle it. I may not be using the correct terminology, but if you follow this process, I do promise that you will elevate your clips from that raw out of the camera form to a more professional post-production level of film. So, all right, on to temperature and tint. You can see here that it's a little bit on the cool side. We're leaning towards blue in the temperature, or we could go up to positive 10 and you'll see that it brings out more of the oranges, more of the warmer colors in the clip. So we wanna keep this in mind as we're adjusting the slider. We don't want our image to be too warm because then it has sort of a gold orange tint, which isn't what we necessarily want. And you don't wanna to go too cold either because it gets a very blue tint to it. So you wanna find that balance. In this case, I don't think we need to do much with it. In fact, I think negative 10 was probably good. Let's bump it up to negative five, see what that looks like. Let's go to zero. Zero is probably where we're gonna stay, but just for the heck of it, let's go ahead and take a look at five. And it just warms it up just a bit. It's such a minute difference that it doesn't really matter. Typically when you're playing with the temperature slider, it's really at your discretion how you want it to look. Now, if you do go too far left or right on this slider, your image can look sort of 
clownish. So I went 75, and we see you've got like an orange film over top of the actual footage. Now, cinematically, I don't hate this. I think this actually works really well in some settings, some scenarios, but for what I'm attempting to do, I'm trying to inform, I'm not trying to, again, sway the viewer in any way to feel a certain way, to believe a certain thing before heading into this documentary, this mini documentary, rather. I'm not gonna use this. I want it to be true to form. So this does have a cinematic appeal to it, but it's just not quite right for what we want. On the same token, if we go negative 75, you'll see it sort of does the same thing. The blue's a little bit more harsh, and it definitely distorts it to the point that maybe it looks a little less professional. Maybe somebody doesn't know what they're doing really, or somebody can't see very well. But in this case, you could also use this clip to convey an emotion or a mood, or just try to put the viewer in a certain type of mindset. But again, that's not what we're trying to do. We're trying to keep them straight and narrow. Everything's gonna be presented very factually. We don't want them swayed in any way, shape, or form. So zero works perfect right down the middle. The tint is sort of the same type of thing. Uh, you don't really wanna play with the tint too much because then you can really start to get some wacky looks. Uh, it's set at three right now, we'll go back to zero, and this is how the finished clip will look. Very true to form, again. But if we wanted to play with the slider, let's go negative 75, very green. And in no setting have I ever seen this coloration used unless it's some sort of psychedelic type of clip or film. It's, it's just odd, it looks weird. The eye, it's displeasing to the eye, really. Same if you go with the, the magenta color, you go a little too high up the scale to 75. It looks a little better than the green, but again, I don't see many productions that have this effect over top of the clip. It's just a little displeasing to the eye, and if you get too crazy with the tint, it can really throw the vibe of what you're trying to do with your video off completely. So we'll go back to zero there. So this was definitely the easier of the two clips. This is going to be our master clip setting or a master color grade setting moving forward for clips that are like this, whether they're shot uh, facing north, facing south, or facing east, we're gonna be using this profile and adjust it as we need as we go. So let's go to the more difficult of the two clips, which is this one facing into the sun, and you'll see that the sky is completely blown out on this. So we wanna take care of this and try to fix it as best we can. So just so you don't get frustrated, here's something that I've learned. Clips like this are not a lost cause, but they're about as close as you're gonna get without actually losing the cause. We can still do something with this and we can still present it in a very professional and very appealing way, but this blown out sky almost certainly ruins this clip for the most part. Now there are some elements of this clip that I really like and that's why I wanna use this in the production. For instance, this hill right here, you've got the lone tree in the middle of this clearing where all these other trees are and that big shadow that's casted over the pathway that leads into the garage. It's just a very cool clip and I really wanna include it in this project because it makes for some stunning visuals. So we're gonna to try to work our way around this. Again, you can only do so much, but we're gonna to try to do what we can and restore some of the original true to form color of the sky here. So we'll start again with the exposure. For something like this where there's a part of the image that's blown out, I like to just go to the extreme with the exposure. I'll go to negative one. And you can see that it sort of puts a gray veil over top of the image. We don't want that. It sort of throws the whole thing off. We want to at least maintain how this looks down here because this is probably the highlight or the best part of the picture, the best part of the footage. So we're just trying to fix this and I don't wanna do any gradients up here. It's just a quick, fast, let's get this done. Let's make it look as good as it possibly can without getting too involved. So we'll knock this back to negative 0.5. And that's pretty reasonable. You brought this back, it's not nearly as harshly blown out up here, but you also didn't really ruin the integrity of what's going on down here. So we'll move on to contrast. Now we do have some darker areas down here, so we don't wanna get real crazy with the contrast. So this is a scenario where I would maybe start at 20 instead of 25. Just see how it looks, that's pretty good. Let's see if we can cheat it up to 25 though. Okay, that's not too bad. We'll keep it at 25. If we go up to 35, it starts to get a little hairy in those areas. You start to lose some of the detail in the darker areas. So we'll keep it back at 25. Highlights. Now this is where, again, we're gonna be a little aggressive on the initial adjustment. So we're gonna go negative 100 just to see how that looks. And again, you've got that thin gray film over top of the footage. It's not something we wanna keep. This isn't what we wanna retain when we actually produce this and make it the final form. So we're gonna actually scale this back too to negative 25. And again, that brought it back a little bit, but let's see if we can cheat it up to negative 50. 
And you may have already noticed that the name of this game is playing with the sliders. You have to sort of play with the levels until you play with them and get comfortable with what comes out of your camera, whatever kind of camera you're using, whether it's a drone or a handheld, no matter what the case is, you have to get comfortable with, with what comes out of the camera naturally and learn how to manipulate the sliders in a way that brings the best out of that footage. So you just sort of have to play with it, get a feel for what you're working with, and then you'll start to develop a rhythm where you'll know where you need to sort of start to get the sliders in the right areas. So we'll go down to shadows. We do want to bump the shadows just a little bit, we'll bring it up to a five, but see that, that makes it very noisy down here. So actually we want to go negative five. It makes it a little dark, but you know what? We'll keep it, we'll retain that for now. Go to the whites, we'll do negative 15. And you see the whites are a little more specific to only the white color. So the sky was brought back and you can almost even see a little bit of the blue coming through up here. And it's not very noticeable, but it's enough that I'm sitting here going, okay, we might be able to salvage this better than I thought we could. And like I said, I always like to try to match the blacks and the whites. And again, it just gives it a little bit of a balance towards the bottom of the picture here. So we'll go to saturation. And again, I don't like to oversaturate, but we'll play with it real quick just to see what happens, just because that sky is so badly blown out. We'll see if we can bring any of the blue back by oversaturating it, see what that looks like. And you can, you definitely bring out a little bit of the blue, but this is awfully green and it's green to the point that it almost doesn't look real. So let's see what 150 looks like. So we lost some of the blue. There's still some up there. We've salvaged that pretty well, I think. And we have a very natural look to our grass down here in our trees as well. So we're gonna keep it at 150 and we'll just move forward from there. So these two clips are our master clips. They have our master color profiles that we're going to apply to clips that are like them throughout the project. Now, I'm not gonna sit here and produce the entire episode on camera. It would be way too long of an episode and you would get very bored. Whether you know how to edit video or not, at some point you'd wanna turn me off. So we're not gonna make you sit through that. If you do have any requests for me to go through the entire process, please leave a comment down below. I'll be happy to make content that involves going through and showing you how I actually edit the videos from beginning to end if that's what you want but for now I'm gonna guess that's not what you want you just wanted a quick dirty lesson on what goes on behind the scenes when I'm editing these videos and I was happy to start with color grading this time around because honestly it's probably the easiest topic to start with so what I'm gonna do is just show you for an example two more clips and we're just gonna copy and paste the settings from these color profiles over and we'll make some adjustments just to fit those new clips that we throw in there so let me look through here this will be a good clip for looking into the west. We'll do that one first. And then this will be a good clip for looking anywhere else and how those light profiles are. So we'll start with the one here because again, there's not a lot that goes into this once we have our master profile set up on these two clips. And you can have as many master profiles as you need. So if you have three different lighting sources, three different lighting setups, three different looks to the footage based upon how the drone or the camera is angled. You can create three different profiles, really as many as you need. You can have an individual profile for every one, but the goal here is to get a consistent look. So I do like to create that master profile and then copy and paste it over to each clip. So we'll start here. We'll go up, right click on the original or the first clip, click copy. We'll come over to this one here. And I always like to look at what it looks like beforehand before I go ahead and paste it over. So we'll go ahead, take a look at this. It's very similar. Uh, maybe a little bit more color comes through naturally because the sun isn't right here looking into the camera. It's behind these trees in this building. So we'll go ahead and we'll right click on the clip, paste attributes. We wanna ask us which ones we wanna paste. We want to paste all of them in this case. Click okay. Now you can see that it's not perfect, it's a little dark. So that's when we come in here. And again, we're looking for consistent. We're not looking for a replica. We're looking for a consistent look. So here we want to come up and maybe bring the blacks up by five. Nah, maybe that's a little too much. So maybe we wanna keep it at negative 10. That's not bad. Bring the whites up by five. That blows the sky out a little bit. It's not terrible though, we can fix that. Uh, highlights is how we're gonna fix that. So we'll go to negative 75, see what that looks like. You can see the sky was sort of reeled in a little bit. We're definitely getting some pretty vivid blue out over here. And shadows, we have negative 0.5. Maybe we'll bring the shadows up to 15, see what that looks like. And that does help a lot. Not a lot of noise through here, so that's good. It has a very natural, crisp, cinematic look to it, but it's also not very, very dark that you can't see anything through here. So it's a very good combo. Now, the one change that we will need to make on this is over here, you'll see, we still have negative 10 on the temperature, and I forgot to actually go over this. 
I don't really want to mess with the temperature too much because the coolness of this image actually brings out the blue up here. So if we bring this to zero, it's going to put us right back where we started with that sky and it's going to have that very white blown out look. So negative 10 actually brings through a little bit of the color. The only place that I missed that I probably should have mentioned is we do want to bring that tint back to zero because it's the more natural look. So we'll go through here. And ideally we would have copied and pasted that over. But in this case, we do want to warm this image up just a little bit because this building looks a little too blue for it to be natural. So let's go ahead and bring this to zero. See what that looks like. Now we did lose a little color out of the sky, but this was brought back in and it has a much more natural color profile now. So we'll bring this to zero as well. That looks pretty good to me. So you can really play with it, get it to look exactly how you want to look. So if I wanted to bring the shadows up to 25 even to brighten that up even more, starting to play a little bit of a risky game because you might bring this into a situation where it's very noisy and the darker areas have pixelation that you can see. That's not what you want for your professional cinematic looking footage. But in this case, it doesn't look too bad. So we will actually keep that at 25. Just play with it. You'll learn to get a feel for how you need to adjust this from clip to clip. So let's go ahead and do that for the other clip as well. Go ahead and copy, bring it over here, take a look at what the footage looks like ahead of time. So you can see we have some blue in the sky here. Again, much like the other image because it's taken from sort of the same spot, just different elevations. Very natural color selection right now. So let's go ahead and paste those attributes. And it's gonna ask us and we went okay. And it just makes everything pop. Do you see that? We'll go ahead and undo. So you've got that much more flat color profile. It's still pretty natural, pretty true to form, but overall it's flat. But then when you go ahead and you redo the color change, you can see it just makes everything pop and it elevates that image just a little bit more, which is exactly what we want. So this is how my process for color grading goes. I use this for all of my projects, but Obviously, when I want to convey a certain tone or a certain emotion, that's where I'll play with the colors a little bit more and I'll maybe tint it a certain way or I'll bring the temperature up or down and I'll play with the lighting a little bit more. For this Sky High History, we want to keep everything very, very straightforward and just make those colors pop so that when the viewer is watching the video and they're listening to the information, they're engaging the video with some really stellar cinematic looking footage out of the drone and it's keeping their attention so they can get the full version of the history lesson I'm providing them. So there you have it. The first episode of Behind the Scenes with Drone Geek Lancaster is wrapping up. I was really happy to share this with you guys. I'm glad to pull the curtain back a little bit and I hope to continue doing that as well. I hope this video gets a good response and it's something you guys want to see more of because it's fun for me to share the experience of beginning to end of a project, whether it's on-site filming, all of the adventures we have in between, whether it's going to get ice cream or whatever the case may be, all the way to the finished product when you see it on YouTube and you watch it as a finished piece. It's just a really cool experience and I'm glad I get to share it with you guys because I enjoy it immensely. If you like this video, hit the like button down below. It helps me out a lot. And if you really like my content, hit that subscribe button. We are on the quest to 1,000 subscribers and I'm not going to stop reminding you until we get there. I've said that a million times. I mean it. We are not going to stop reminding you that we are on the quest to 1,000 subscribers until we get there. So if you've subscribed already, thank you. If you haven't, really consider hitting that button. It helps me out a lot and it costs you absolutely nothing. And if you really love my content, if you love my channel, you want to stay up to date with it and you want to be the first one to see the content as it comes out, hit the bell icon next to the subscribe button. It'll send you a notification every time I post a new video, which means you can be one of the first people to see the stuff that I'm putting out there as it's being produced, which is pretty cool. This is your second reminder to go ahead and hit that subscribe button. It helps me out a lot and we are on the quest to 1000 subscribers. I'm Chris, the drone geek of Lancaster. And until next time, I am out of here. Peace. Do you see that little guy right there? That is a spotted lanternfly. They are an invasive species to the United States. Yeah, he's trying to get away. Now, a little does he know he's safe today, purely because I'm here on a mission. But typically, when you see these bugs, you want to kill them. They're encouraged to kill them, actually. So let's go ahead and get him to shove off and stop interrupting our flight. But you can see the spotted, spotted pattern on them. There he goes. All right, come on, jump off.
They jump really high. And they're all, yeah, there you go. See, he's gone. All right. Yeah, kill those things. 